together now the first evidence that you have met god is not power the first evidence that you have met god is not elevation the first evidence that you have met god according to isaiah chapter 6 is a revelation of the true state of your heart leading to reverence and honor Do you believe that? Hmm. Verse 47. Same Luke 8. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Give it to us, please luke 8 47 watch this and the woman saw when jesus said who touched me everybody was denying and the woman knowing look what has happened to her the first thing that happened to her was she knew that i cannot lie in his presence i've been touched something left him into me and if it is true that the person who touched me is grace and truth personified then that effect must happen in me and the bible says when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, not fear, reverence, and falling down before him. Does that look like what the 20 and 4 elders do? And she declared unto him before all the people what was the cause, the reason why she touched him, and how she was healed immediately. Let me tell you the truth. When men touch God, it alters something about the state of their heart. It is impossible to meet the God of the Bible and remain the same. The version that met God is never the version that leaves his presence. If you meet God and that same version left, you met a demon spirit. I assure you, if it is the God of the Bible, no matter how stubborn you are, something will happen when you see God in his glory. You can choose to live in denial and ignore him. But one thing is that your life will never be the same. Are we together when abraham had an encounter with the god of the bible something happened to him when jacob had an encounter with the god of the bible his name was was changed from jacob a cheat and a supplanter into israel the promise for thou what is your name? And he said, I am Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. Touched the whole of his tie, blessed him, changed his name to Israel. The sun arose there and he called it Peniel, the face of God. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. How about Isaiah in chapter 6? Isaiah was a great prophet, mighty prophet, anointed prophet. Isaiah was not a fake prophet. He was a genuine prophet. The book of Isaiah begins with prophecy. And in chapter 6, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, verse 1, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord when he saw him high and lifted up. The Bible says the train of his robe filled the temple. When Isaiah saw the Lord, nobody told him anything by himself he said whoa i am undone i am a man of unclean lips and i dwell amidst a people of unclean lips that is not condemnation that is the convicting power of the presence of god and god didn't say you are being too harsh on yourself he said who shall we send and in fact one of the seraphs the bible says took a live coal not a cold one a live coal and touched his lips the instrument that he will use to prophesy to the nations and he said your iniquity this moment is taken away from you do you know if you had met isaiah in chapter one to five and said dear prophet do you know that there is iniquity in your heart that man will probably crucify you and say you are stupid for status let me even prophesy to you but by the time he encountered god that was not an issue of fake or real you don't have to be fake to need the help of God. The purifying power of God is for all men. Isaiah encounters the God of the Bible. And from the eyes of God's mercy and fire, a seraph takes a live coal and touches him. 
and says your iniquity is taken away and your sins purged then verse 8 i heard a voice saying who shall i send and who shall go for us isaiah already a genuine prophet preaching prophesying he now said do you know what let's start ministry again here i am send me isaiah would have been building branches called koinonia isaiah would have been holding great conferences and yet while he was doing all of that heaven was still saying who shall we send can i tell you the truth if you encounter the god of the bible you will love his presence more than ministry you will love his presence more than reputation you will love his presence more than title trying to give a good name and a good those things would die immediately the prophet said whoa i am undone he said i am a man of unclean lips and i dwell amidst the people of unclean lips you never encounter the god of the bible and the spirit of reverence and honor for him does not come upon you if you meet god the god of the bible and the only thing you walk out with is revelation something is questionable about your encounter the first thing that happens when men meet god is they die to themselves they die to their ambitions they die there is a level of brokenness 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 i think that should be psalm 51 and verse 17 did i get that right let's try it psalm 51 yes the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit is that in your bible a broken and a contrite heart oh god any man any man that encounters the god of the bible any man that touches god from what flows from him to you you cannot remain the same Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want I'm open before you Lord this is a very powerful prayer in fact that, that's the part I want you to say again do to me what you want it's it's a it's a prayer I say surrender do to me what you want Forget that I'm a man of God. I come as your child. Take away apostle and prophet. Take away whatever it is. Those titles can be interruptions to your having an encounter. I am Geo. I am president. When you come before God, you take away your golden crowns and cry before your maker. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. If there be any wicked way in me, lead me to the way of the last day. Let me tell you the truth when God stretches his hands and allows you to touch him the first thing that happens to you is that everything that is not him becomes threatened in your life immediately everything that is not him everything it dies a, a war a real warfare begins from within you you see you will never know how many luggages are there interrupting your flight in the spirit until he touches you when something flows from the god of the bible to you it's impossible to sleep and be at peace no you will find out that you don't even want to be among a crowd again you will walk alone like a madman it's a season of cont there, there is a pruning at that point you will not think of your titles again at that point you will not think of your accolades again it is the reason why we fast yet we don't receive anything because we don't use them as vehicles to touch him we use them as vehicles to create pride and accolades is the reason why we pray and as sincere as it is we don't touch him is the reason why we read sincerely and quote scripture yet the corresponding evident transformation does not follow who touched me 
there are evidences that follow men when God reaches down to touch you it is because like the seraphs he wants to roll away that iniquity he wants to roll away that sin from your life and bring you to a point where you are purified like gold purified like gold purified like gold is somebody learning tonight purified like gold let me tell you the truth your service is useless until the state of your heart is pure your service to god is useless until the state of your heart is pure your service will do not much to if you it doesn't matter how effective the service is until god finds a genuine vessel your service